सूरज की पहली किरण के साथ दिन की शुरुआत कीजिए सुबह का मंगल प्रभात आपको शुभ हो सुबह सुबह हो खुशियों का मेला न लोगों की परवाह न दुनिया का झमेला पंछियों का संगीत हो और मौसम अलबेला मुबारक हो आपको ये खूबसूरत सवेरा हर सोमवार से लेकर शुक्रवार तक सुबह छह से लेकर नौ बजे तक शामिल रहे रेडियो फिजिटो आरोप हम सफर में रविंद सिंह के साथ हाउ वुड यू लाइक टू स्पेंड योर मॉर्निंग यू कुड स्पेंड योर मॉर्निंग लाइक दिस Or you could spend it like this. Tune in to the morning ride every weekday morning from 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. right here on Today FM. Today is Hit Music. Tonight on FBC News, United Nations commends Fiji for reducing hunger by half. Court hears of alleged control chemicals shipped to Fiji in a toy box, and voter registration center opens in Nausori. Good evening. I'm Jackie Spate, and you're watching FBC News. The United Nations has commended Fiji for being one of the countries to halve the number of people living in hunger in just three years. Director General of the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization, Dr. Jose Graciano da Silva, complimented Fijian Prime Minister Vorenge Mbainimarama on the achievement. Shireen Lata reports. Eliminating hunger is part of the 2015 deadline for the Millennium Development Goals, and the United Nations has recognized the efforts of Fiji. Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama discussed the progress of the agricultural census, which is currently underway with the Director General. They also discussed the implementation of voluntary guidelines and assistance from the FIO to support the recovery of agricultural livelihoods following the destruction of Cyclone Evan in 2012. The Prime Minister thanked the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization for its technical cooperation with Fiji. The Director General further discussed the work the FAO is doing in trying to create South-South cooperation synergies between Brazil's Sugar Research Institute and the Fijian sugar industry. In his capacity as chair of the Group of 77 and China, the Prime Minister repeated the importance of addressing food security and moving towards sustainable agriculture as key tools to eliminate poverty. Bani Marama stressed that there is a need to look beyond the MDGs by including food security and sustainable agriculture in the elaboration of the Sustainable Development Goals. It was agreed that the chair of G77 would arrange a special meeting in November in New York to allow the Director General a briefing and hold discussions on these matters. Prime Minister Vorenge Baini Marama also met the United Nations Director General for the Industrial Development Organization, His Excellency Lee Wong, at the UN headquarters in New York today. Meeting for the first time, the Director General and the Prime Minister discussed new plans and the new directions for the organizations under the proposed vision of inclusive and sustainable development industry. Shahin Lata, FBC News. The trial of Isikeli Tamani and Amena Rambuli, charged with importation of controlled chemicals and aiding and abetting, began in the Suva High Court this morning. Both pleaded not guilty. Shanal Sivan is following the trial. It is alleged that in December 2009, Customs Officer Vimlesh Narayan at the Nandi International Airport opened a parcel containing a battery-operated tricycle. He became suspicious when the air bill did not have a local contact and a third-party arrangement, meaning it could be collected by someone who wasn't the registered recipient. Also, the parcel came from China, a high-risk country. He then dismantled the tricycle. In it, he found 2.6 kilograms of pink granules in plastic bags. The granules were later tested and found to be pseudofedrin hydrochloride, which can be used to make methamphetamine, which goes under street names like speed and ecstasy. Narayan said the sender's name was Esther Wilson, while the recipient was one Jack Wilson of Watwanga Suva. The state produced its second witness this afternoon. Ramesh Prasad Lal, who is a customs supervisor at the Carpenters Shipping Department 
and identified the box in which the tricycle arrived in Fiji. Tamani and Rambuli were arrested when they went to Carpenter's shipping bond in Suva to pick up the item. State lawyers say they will produce a total of 13 witnesses as the trial continues in the Suva High Court. Chanel Shivan, FBC News. Thousands of people in the Western Division and Yasawas are facing critical water shortages after receiving no rainfall for about two months. The drought has the Commissioner Western's office now carting water to areas not covered by the Fiji Water Authority. Apisalomidokar reports. Close to 10,000 people have been affected, including the Asawas and Malolo Island. We had a little bit of water in our tanks, so we normally fill our water on Tuesdays and Fridays. It was three buckets a family. There was no rain here for over a month. It was very hot, but lucky uh, there was rain last week. We were on the verge to boil seawater so we can drink it, and thanks to government, for transporting water. There was no water rain here for nearly two months, but we were lucky that we had water in our water tank in the school and the church minister's resident, we had to use water wisely. The Commissioner Western's office estimates that close to 30 villages and settlements between Nanronga and Rakiraki are affected because their wells and other sources of water are drying up. Uh, what we have done uh, last week is the delivery of water to these areas. Uh, we have engaged the vessel Kaiwai uh, to deliver water to Viwa and uh, to the other parts of Yasawa. Commander Dawaki says for now families only need water for daily consumption. Farms and livestock are okay. The farms were not affected but it's only the water supply. Most of the people in uh, especially Yasawa, they rely on uh, rain water harvesting and the tanks have dried up, so it is time now for, for us to, to bring in the water to, to them. The Commissioner Western's office is transporting water three times a day to each village and settlement. The needs of the people are monitored by district officers. Apisolo Medoka, FBC News. The newest permanent voter registration centre is now open in Ausori, becoming the third in the country. Acting Permanent Secretary for Elections, Mohamed Sinim, says the centre will give Fijians living in the Suvanau Sori corridor the opportunity to register at their convenience. Sinim said that young Fijians in particular are encouraged to make use of this new facility as they turn 18. The new registration centre is located in the Government Information Centre at Hemron Plaza and is open Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Fijians who are already registered can also check their personal details at this centre. A 68-year-old man of Navoa is the latest drowning victim. It's believed the man was bathing in a river at Naroko settlement in Bua yesterday when he drowned. Police say the deceased was on a business trip to Ndriketi with other workmates when he decided to bathe in the river despite being advised otherwise. He was last seen heading towards the, Na the Nangando River and after some time, an employee went to search for him. His body was then found floating in the river. Investigations continue, and the body is now at the Number Walu Mortuary, awaiting post-mortem. Green gold, Fiji's forest estimated worth $80 million. Bula! Oya wa sala bilawa. Ndoba te kiao mena diwa kina tini karona kaloko na sing le boni moni te kina vara rumbuka. Kako ni valata na no musu ni sarisari. Na kaisa mo rian dolo loma le ni vani ni nau. Ongori ke de mena diwa kina tini karona kaloko na sing le boni moni te kina vara rumbuka. Ena bula FM number two ena sere. Bula, I'm Wame. Join me every weekday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the Center Show with classic hits from the 70s as well as the 80s right here on Gold FM. Welcome back. You're watching FBC News. Fiji's forest resources are estimated to be worth around $85 million annually. Economist Professor Biman Prasad says this estimation of our forestry sector is crucial if we are to keep stock of our natural resources and help in sustainable management. This is the first time a rough value has been put on our forests. Other regional countries are being told to do the same to help against eminent challenges in today's world. 
I think taking stock uh, of what is there is very, very important and is a first step towards uh, valuing you know, environmental resources uh, in our countries in the region. Professor Biman has calculated our forestry sector to be worth $85 million. That's a market value for a year, I know, in terms of uh, uh, what uh, possibly could be an estimated value uh, of, of the forestry um, uh, resources and activities that are undertaken uh, in, in, a, in a particular year. Regional experts here for a technical meeting were told to understand what exists and how to manage these resources. It's easier actually to take stock of what is available in terms of the forests uh, that, that we have in our countries. And uh, once you do that, uh, developing uh, then a very good, you know, sustainable you know, forest uh, management policy uh, would, be, would be easier. And, and I think uh, national policies uh, could be much better informed as a result of that. Fiji has taken the first step in creating an inventory for forests. This biannual meeting will make recommendations for the future. Christopher Chant, FBC News. And news just to hand, there is confirmation tonight that Brigadier Iowane Naivalurua is no longer the police commissioner. A government statement confirms that the term of the current commissioner of police has expired and the matter will be dealt with under the constitution upon the return of the prime minister. Just recapping that, news just to hand, there is confirmation tonight that Brigadier Iowane Naivalurua is no longer the police commissioner. A government statement confirms that the term of the current Commissioner of Police has expired and the matter will be dealt with under the Constitution upon the return of the Prime Minister. The Modar City in Lalvala Bay Suva is pretty much complete with contractors putting on the final touches before it opens to the public. Eleanor Torangai View reports all the major work is already out of the way. Works at this site began in July last year. Initial plans were to have all construction works completed five months ago. Although delayed, the Moda City is now on the final stretch. The whole project is completed. We're doing a fit-out stages at the moment. And as you can see, some of the tenants are in the process of doing a fit-out. All 81 tenants have been given time for fit-out before the big reveal or grand opening. End of October or mid-November, but those are the two two timelines we're looking at. 81 tenants fit out process and also it does take a little bit of time but they are very confident look we are, there's a certain date that's been floated to that we can do it and we have seen that there are some of them are could be meeting that timeline. According to the Modar, the most complicated part of the project is the four screen cinema. We've uh, doing the, um, the VMAX fit out process is very technical uh, we have a, quite a big team that came in just yesterday. We were in the process right now from Sydney, just doing the whole set, set up. Um, and we trying to target to release with uh, Thor 2. This complex, once open, will have four cinemas, supermarkets, restaurants, an international food court and many other amenities. The owners want to provide everything just under one roof, away from the hustle and bustle of the city. It will also create 700 new jobs. Eleanor Turangayview, FBC News. Police are investigating a complaint by a woman that her husband allegedly posted explicit photos of her on a social media network. The 24-year-old woman is claiming that the explicit photo whereby she is the alleged subject was posted on her Facebook account. A complaint was lodged at the Valley Level Police Station in Nasinu. Police spokesperson Ananai Soro said the suspect will be brought in for questioning. The Chinese government will be making financial contributions to the Pacific to help with climate change projects. This was recently announced to a Pacific media delegation. Edwin Nund reports. In the midst of an economic boom, China is heavily industrialized. Some international studies rank the manufacturing giant as the biggest carbon emitter in the world. Uh, Mm -hmm. 
但是它是一个发展中的经济体。中国的排放量很大，它的排放量大是因为它的人口很多。那么，跟某些发达国家在过去二百年工业化的过程当中无约束的排放温室气体，对气候变化造成的这种影响，它的责任是不一样。Li Gao is the deputy director general for the Department of Climate Change in China, which has introduced laws forcing companies to reduce their carbon emissions. Over the next three years, China will pour about 60 million Fijian dollars into the Pacific to help mitigate against climate change. On the global front, China has thrown its hat in with small island states. Li says we deserve more from developed nations. We in the 小岛国的有关的诉求，包括资金、适应、损失损害。我想，只要发展中国家保持团结，我们就能够维护我们的共同利益。He adds, they've set ambitious targets for China to reduce carbon emissions, and already there are signs of improvement. Edwin Nand, FBC News. Sports time now, and Jamie, I hear there's a new sport coming to town. Handball, you mentioned, was it? That's right, Jack. I was thinking you should actually give it a shot. Well, I've never played or watched professional handball, to be honest. What are some of the skills required? Well, neither have I, but I've been told that basically you have to be fast and agile. Wait, maybe the sport isn't exactly for you. <laughs> Excuse me, I'll race you any day. Uh, anyway, let's... Let's not get you work too uh, worked up right now. We'll be back after the break with the details about the new sport to be introduced and more. Stay with us. Aapki shaadi hone wali hai. Panch panch bachche honge. Panch panch. Panch panch. Hi, I am Aapki Saheli Venu. Sunte rehenge Mirchi FM. Main hu na 9 se 12 baje tak. Nisambulo binaka, oya wone kama na langi, oni nandoro mwezi yao, mwena ziwa kina ruwe na visinga, mwena moni iti kina mwaka rumbu, kena Radio Fiji 1 na ndome ibiti bongani vya nyanu. Na mwaka talengana vya ngona sasi vya ni, na tina nakaloko na vya mbongi ni buki lulu. Kena vya mama ni walu, na vya mbongi ni baka ruwai, mwena mbuza ni walu, ninge na maka. Welcome back to FBC Sports. Newly appointed Fiji Sevens coach Ben Ryan says he is eager to get into his new role. The former England mentor who was named coach last week is already drawing up plans to better our Sevens status. Interesting, spoke to Ryan. Building up to, to Australia, so. No time to waste for the new Fiji Sevens rugby mentor. And that is a reason changes will be slower than usual. But it will sure come about for the most loved sporting code in the country. If I suddenly came in next week and made a lot of changes, um, we'd get some, some bad results, I'm sure. So it's important to, to make sure that, that uh, I need to have a look properly. You know, as any good coach would, you need to look properly at what the systems are in place, the players that are in the squad, and then, um, and then make sure that you play to those strengths. So, yep, some patience is needed. Ryan is already contemplating putting in stringent training methods, which should lay the platform for the return to seven supremacy. I'm a fairly hard taskmaster on the field, you know. A lot of my practices are structured around gameplay, a high tempo, and, um, and I'm sure the boys will be huffing and puffing in the first few sessions I've got. Despite coming with a colourful and successful background, Ryan states he is not the one who will only touch the surface in player selection. We want to get the best talent from the nation um, in the team, and you know, I'll, I'll make sure that I'm, I'm, I've got wise people that are helping me select and scout the players around the tournaments and anybody that we feel is is, is um, good enough to be given an opportunity to train and trial with the team. The appointment came as a surprise for many, but the man appointed is laced with knowledge, which combined with the Fijian style will surely pay dividends. All he needs is to initiate his plans with full support, and Fiji can be the kings of sevens once more. Interesting, FBC Sports. The Fiji Sports Council will complete the installation of its new giant screen at the NZ Stadium before the start of the Fiji Water International Sevens next weekend. The screen itself is worth half a million dollars. The Sports Council had to take down the original frame due to some last-minute adjustments. It is currently being set up again and is expected to be ready for the matches this weekend. Fijian football international Roy Krishna is in line to make his home non-competitive debut for Auckland City tomorrow night against Mba. 
A Siberia lad who recently signed for City is named in the match day 24 and also named in the squad for the game against Wellington Phoenix on Saturday. The City and Bar match starts at 7.30 p.m. at Bill McKinley Park, while the Saturday game against Phoenix is at 2 p.m. at Kiwitea Street. And that was your sports for tonight. It's back to Jackie now with business. The government recognizes that strengthening our trading infrastructure and environment must go hand in hand with acquiring supply side capacity at the domestic level. Speaking at a seminar in Suva yesterday, Permanent Secretary for Trade Shaheen Ali said the government is also aware that acquiring market access means overcoming tariff and non tariff barriers. Ali says the export industry should take on the challenge and develop products that are competitive in international markets and comply with international standards and demands. He added that the government has invested in self-sufficiency and economic security through initiatives such as Fijian-made by Fijian, Northern Development Program and land reforms. The aim is to strengthen our economy internally, which will also build capacity to explore markets overseas improve our balance of payments and foreign reserves through exports. Chicken Express will soon be opening its 10th outlet in the country with the newest to open at the Damodar City Complex in Lavala Bay, Suva. CEO Aswin Sharma signed the tenancy agreement with the Moda Brothers CEO Div Damodar this morning. Sharma says they are looking forward to starting operations at the complex. To make sure that we are ready for the opening and this is our first shop in Fiji which is going into a food court. Our concept is normally a dining area within our stores and I'm proud to see that this food court will really work for Chicken Express. 90% of the complex has been filled. Well, the time now and Jen, what do you make of today's weather? Well, Jackie, it was rather cloudy today in the capital. It's also cloudy in Lambasa towards the afternoon. Got a bit wet today in the west for settling down to some nice sunny conditions. I'm sure the best place to be today though would have been Savu Savu. We enjoyed a whole day of sunshine. Look at that. On to temperatures now and you can see that all major centers are in the 30s today. Now I've been feeling quite hot the past few days and don't you start giggling Jackie. And apparently, this is due to warm winds moving over the country from the north. Previously, we had cool air from the south, which explains those cool temperatures. And now, we've got warm northerly winds. Tomorrow, sea showers easing over the west. Occasional showers in Suva and some showers here in the north. Finally, you can catch me again tomorrow. But before I leave you, Here's a photo from Shahif of Lautoka, taken at the good old South Seas Club. Thanks so much for that, Genevieve. The headlines tonight. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization has commended Fiji for reducing hunger by half. Suva High Court told of how alleged control chemicals from China were shipped to Fiji in a toy box. Permanent voter registration center opens in Nausori. And news just to hand tonight that Brigadier Iowane Naivalurua is no longer the police commissioner. This week's poll question, and we're asking, is Ben Ryan the best choice for Fiji Sevens? Visit our FPC website to take part and also catch up on all our daily news stories. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. That's news tonight. I'll be back tomorrow. Until then, good night. जहाँ हो प्यार का बसेरा और रिश्तों की खुशबू वो है आपका अपना घर संसार ज्वाइन मी ऑन घर संसार मंडे टू फ्राइडे नाइन एम टू ट्वेल्व पी एम ओनली ऑन रेडियो फीजी टू Hope you're enjoying the music right now on Gold FM. Only the classic hits, especially if you're spending your time at home or around the office. I certainly hope you're taking it easy and enjoying the music coming your way. Well, I got a whole lot more to keep you moving and to keep you going right up until you uh, reach knockoff time. I'm Kara. Join me every weekday from two to seven on the ride. Only on Gold FM.